Do you want ideas for what you can do when you have a sketch that calls for a lot of white space, but that's not really your thing? Yet you kind of want to keep it clean and simple? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here to help you make the most of your crafty supplies and time. So let's get making. Today I'm going to share with you five, but there's kind of like a bonus, really simple half idea there. Uh, ideas for what to do to add just a little bit of interest to the white background of your card. So for my examples today, I have my six by six paper busting template number 30, and I am going to add a little bit of interest to the background in a couple different ways and show you how that turns out on a card. My first idea is very simple, and it's just to dry emboss the card. I have an embossing folder from Spellbinders. It was the October embossing folder of the month. It has a Christmas theme, and I'm gonna make some Christmas paper because I did take some Spellbinders paper and I cut up a bunch of the card elements. Cause these are just two by two squares with two and a quarter by two and a quarter mats, and you just make a little simple arrangement, but it leaves quite a bit of white space. So this is one of those sketches where I see people adding a little something to the background. And a lot of these are things that I have seen other people do with my sketches. So uh, I really appreciate when you guys share and I just wanted to kind of gather them all in one place because that way you don't have to be scrolling through Instagram endlessly to find all the ideas. But there are hashtags on Instagram, hashtag paper buster, et cetera, and I'll leave some of that in the video description. So if you want to emboss the front, of a card with these Spellbinders larger plates. This is a little bit tricky because you, if you want to emboss it like in this orientation, you have to tuck the card around and then it kind of leaves a bit of a, a bump and it's kind of hard to see, but like some bends and stuff in your card. So if you want to emboss the front, but you don't want that, you can put it on the bottom here, and then you just have to check and make sure that the design looks okay, even in the opposite orientation. So there, a lot of them will be directional, with this being the top. And so if you put it in this way, and you want this to be the top of your cart, it can be problematic, but you know, you can work around it and adjust it. So that's one thing, you can tuck it around, or just take something that is the size of the front of the card and just run that through and then attach it to your card front. So just wanted to share a couple ideas for how you would do that. And then follow the directions on your machine for how you would emboss. And so now I have an embossed background. This is very subtle because it's just white on white, but then I can still take my three pieces and stack them on top. So each of my cards, after I make the background, I'll stack the three squares on top, and then I'm gonna add some die cuts from the coordinating kit. So there was the Oh What Fun die cut shapes and the Oh What Fun die cut sentiments that were an add-on to the kit. And I'll show you a little stack of completed cards at the end. So my next idea, another really simple idea, is to splatter on the background. For splattering, you will want something to protect your work surface. This was an old shipping box, and I just kind of cut it down so they have like angled sides, and it's enough to kind of protect it, but I can still see what I'm working with. Then you'll take your card base, and you can do this with sprays or just whatever ink you happen to have on hand. So I'm just gonna use some of my Lawn Fawn mini ink cubes, and I just kind of smush it onto a silicone mat. This is one that I picked up at Dollar Tree. Scrapbook.com makes a really nice large one. That's great to use. Spray some water so that I have something to flick on with a paintbrush, and that's another really inexpensive tool. So as you can see, doing this technique is really just stuff you already have on hand, but can add a little bit of interest. I also, spritzed on some shimmer spray to go with the colored dots because it was a Christmas look. So you could do that as well. And that was just kind of, um, you wanna shake up your shimmer spray, but you don't wanna like shake it back and forth like this cause that can often clog it. You like to roll it between your hands and that will um, shake up the spray without causing any clogging issues typically. And then, you know, spritz that on and for my finished result, I got this sort of soft, shimmery, splatter background. And I simply, again, add my three squares. You can, of course, mix up your pattern paper. 
I'm just keeping it simple today. My next idea is just to do some ink blending in the background. And so in this case, you'll want to sort of focus your color um, underneath the elements of your card and then sort of fade it out. So I'm going to use some Distress Oxide Spun Sugar for this one and I'll need to switch to my Oxide um, Blending Brush. I have two sets of brushes in my craft room and I purchased them on Amazon and one is for Distress Oxide inks and one is for every other kind of ink which is actually just for me Distress ink and Lawn Fawn inks but um, I, the only way I separate them is by their ink type. So then my pink for uh, works for all my Lawn Fawn inks, all my Distress inks that are pink. And then I have another set of, I have one more pink brush for all my pink oxides. But I certainly have nothing close to one brush for each color as that is absolutely not necessary. So this is gonna be a light, slow, building of color kind of thing. And as you can see, I have just a different silicone mat. This is one from scrapbook.com, cut up. They all pretty much work the same. It's a bit like, you know, what would you get a good deal on? What could you find? What color do you prefer? That kind of thing. But I like to have a few of them because sometimes I have a bunch of projects going on at one time and I don't want to clean them off in between. So right now I probably have like three dirty mats in my craft room and then I'll go wash them all off at the same time. So I used worn lipstick on here. I think it was a little too intense. So I would rather use this one, but then I would want it to dry first. And you can see it's just really subtle, but I can totally add more and keep building up. I just don't want to spend too much of your time doing that. So you'll see this finished card at the end, but you're just trying to kind of concentrate at the middle of where your design is and radiate outward with color. Something else I wanted to mention just about the silicone mats in case you haven't seen it. I actually do have some like ink trays and I think the ink stands are great. I'm not trying to say don't buy them. I just, if that is not in your budget, then consider that this when you put an ink pad on a silicone mat, it doesn't really move around. So, and also your card base won't really either. The main reason I'm holding my card base is just because I'm holding it closed. But if you had your cardstock open like this, you would not really have to hold it. It doesn't, it's not perfect because this is also not completely on the mat, but just something to consider that this is a, another way of approaching that, you know, not wanting to shift around kind of situation. Next step is pretty similar. So we're going to kind of put them back to back here. And that's ink blending through a stencil instead of just plain ink blending. This of course maybe needs a little bit more supplies in the sense that you need a stencil. And this I think is called like peppermint, winter peppermint or something from scrapbook.com. It'll be linked in the video description. Everything that I've used, I will as much as I you know re remember and as possible, etc. And I am using some scrapbook.com mint tape to tape it on. In theory, you can like butt it up into the corner and of the, because this is the waffle flower stencil mat, which is cool because that idea that, yeah, like it has the edges. So you could put your stencil in the corner, put your card in the corner and you know, things wouldn't move around and all that. But then you have to use the corner of the stencil. A lot of times that's not the part of the stencil that I want to use, but I do like that this will basically hold the stencil down now because it is up there in the corner and then you can use the same Distress Oxide ink I was just using. This happens to be the Bubblegum ink from Lawn Fawn. Again, if I put it so that it's the bottom of it's touching some silicone, then I don't really have to worry about it moving around too much. As you can see, the cardstock doesn't move around a lot, but it doesn't also stay perfectly in place. Something just to consider. The reason I'm even mentioning this is because if you hold your paper, you will transfer, without meaning to, a little oil from your hands, and then the ink will resist the spot where the oil is. And then you can see a fingerprint on your card. It's not a big deal, and the other alternative is to take um, more scrapbook.com mint tape, which I thought I had on my desk, here it is, because I always have a few pieces of this sitting on my desk. Um, if you wanna hold something down, put some tape on your fingers first, just make sure the tape is clean. Obviously, if it has ink on it, then you're just gonna get an ink splotch instead of a fingerprint. But 
Um, just lightly go through the stencil as much as you like. I, in general, think light inks and a similar matching color works perfect for these techniques. I didn't want to do something that's like too dark and sort of show stealing, show stopping on the background. I just want it to be something subtle, adding a little bit of interest. And then I made sure that my cardstock mats were a really dark pink because I wanted them to stand out. So we can peel that up. Scrapbook.com mint tape is my probably my favorite for anything that I need a really loose tack for, just because one of the things I really like is frog delicate tape. It does do a good job a lot of the time, but as you can see, this pulled up the back of my cardstock, and that's because it was really fresh. So while this is a great solution a lot of the time, if you really need something low tack, try the scrapbook.com mint tape, or if you have this on hand, put it on you know, your shirt or something first and remove some of that tackiness by basically letting some of your sweatshirt fuzz get stuck on there so that it doesn't rip your cardstock. And then again, and you can see it's a very subtle background. This one's a little bit more dry so that I can go ahead and put down my pieces of pattern paper right away. If your ink is wet, sometimes adhesive does not stick to it as well, so it's always good to give it a few minutes to dry. The last way to add a little interest to the background of your cards is to use a background stamp. I prefer a background stamp that isn't very solid, but if you like a more solid background stamp, please go for it. I find them harder to stamp, so I'll flip this over so you can more clearly see its design. It's just going to make these lines. and. So if you have a more solid one, it's harder to get a really great impression and it's going to draw more attention away. But I like this one because it has triangles and then the pattern paper I chose has the tree triangle. So hopefully it complements it without um, detracting from it. Again, I'm gonna pick a really light ink, go back to that Distress Oxide Sponge Sugar. Distress Oxide has some pigment properties to it and that means that you can stamp it really well, but it still dries pretty good. I've had a lot of trouble in the past with pigment ink that just never seems to dry unless I heat emboss it. And that's not really my thing. I really do prefer to keep my stamping simple. What I'm gonna do here though, what's nice about this, is this ink, in part because it's pigment, I can see that it's covering the stamp. Like here's a little bit of area that it's not covering, and I can see that because I can see the ink. And that can be pretty helpful just to make sure that you have good coverage the first time through. Now you can stamp this in a misty or a stamp positioner, absolutely, but I find it a little bit tricky to do just because you have to like, if you're used to working with clear stamps, one, you have to take your mat out and then you have to like peel the backing off of this and stamp it. It's, again, it's not a big deal. It's just, I think this is a little bit faster if you're just trying to get a simple image on it put my card base directly onto it, put a scrap paper, and I'm just gonna rub it. You can get a brayer out. I don't actually own a brayer. I know there's some fun techniques you can do with it, but I keep my scrap room, pre or my craft room pretty simple and try to keep as few things as possible so I don't get overwhelmed. That happens to me easily. Okay. And then when I lift it up, I gotta be careful not to shift it because if I swipe it across the stamp at all, then I'm gonna spread the ink. So I'm gonna lift straight up. And then I get a pretty good impression. Of course, you can make sure you get a perfect impression with a stamp positioner. And again, I want the lighter ink just because these were my kind of test ones. And so here I would put this down. And my bonus idea for what to do in the background if you feel like there's too much white space is just to make sure it's not white. Choose a colored cardstock. It's still a lot of technically like white space in terms of, sorry, this like ink splotch is, is bothering me. I'm worried I'm gonna push something into it accidentally. Okay. Um, if you compare white space on a colored card Two, and I gotta grab another card here real quick. I like to keep all of my cards pre-cut and scored so that I don't have to stop and cut a new one every single time. So, you know, in these two instances, 
you might notice that you don't, you're not as bothered by the extra space here when it has a little bit of color to it that might not be enough for you so you might want to try one of those techniques i just suggested or combine the two use a piece of colored cardstock for your card base and do like a tone on tone stamping tone on tone stenciling so let's take a look at how all of these ideas turn out so you can see which ones might suit you so this is just the plain card on the background which again for many people it's just a little too much plain a little too much white space so then we have stenciled version of the card and I'm gonna try to find some of the inspiration that I have found on Instagram and like link them in the video description below so people who I've seen do some of these ideas in the past here's the embossed card I've done this quite a few times myself I really like that look because it's super super subtle here's the splatter this is another one that I like because of how subtle and easy to do it is like you could splatter so many of them so quickly whereas you know some of the other techniques take a little bit more time but that splatter one super fast even the embossing um the stamping this one always intimidates me a little bit just because i'm afraid i'm not going to get a great image with background stamps but i think it looks really nice especially if you do something really subtle in the background in a really light color and yeah then there's that that plain card again so if you found this video helpful, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next Templar tutorial. And check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.